In this lab exercise, you're going to develop a simple bank application. So we are making the following assumptions. We have only three clients in the bank. So this means it is not necessary for you to use the array data structure or any loops. So we will talk about arrays and how to use loops on the array later in the course. But for this lab, you can try to actually practice the following pattern. Try to declare three separate variables for client one, client two, and client three. So you can look at the instructions for more hints. Okay, let's try to demonstrate the assumed sequence of user actions, given that we only got three clients. So this is the sequence of actions you can assume uh, any user of your app is going to follow. And before we talk about that, notice that the title for the app should be EECS 1022 Winter 18 Lab 4 and then Back Application. Okay, so now we're going to illustrate how the user is going to use your app. You don't have to do many error checking for this particular lab, we'll illustrate to you. Okay, first of all, you can see that we're going to enter the name of the client number one, let's say Alan. Okay, and the initial balance for client number one. It can be any uh, number, including double number with uh, uh, digits after the decimal point. For example, if I say 34 point, uh, let me just use a larger number. Let's say 100 points, uh, 345. In this case, when you actually eventually display the initial balance on the uh, uh, on the mobile screen, which I'll show you, it's going to display all. It's going to format the number such that only two digits are displayed after the decimal point. So you have done this for all the previous labs. So this shouldn't be difficult for you. Okay. And then we also got Mark over here. And the initial balance for Mark would be, let's say, 200 points. Let's say 478. Okay. And also we have uh, Tom as client number three. And then uh, initial balance for uh, Tom would be, let's say, 300 point uh, 784. Okay. So you can see it's completely acceptable to actually enter numbers with decimal points okay decimal point and also with uh, digits after decimal point okay so now we can assume that the user of your app is going to enter name initial balance for all the three clients before they click on this particular button here for creating accounts so now as soon as i cl uh, click on this button here for creating the accounts it's going to create three separate objects of type clients one for alan one for tom and another one for uh, Mark. So once we got these three uh, client objects, we can then provide services for the bank, which will be the second section that I'm gonna demonstrate. But now let me click on the button here and then watch what's gonna happen in the uh, output panel over here, the label, okay? If I say create accounts, you can see that now here we say we got three lines because we got three clients. And then we say clients, the name of the clients, you cannot say client one, okay? Although we know that client Alan refers to client one, and Mark refers to client two, and Tom refer, uh, refers to client three. But over here, we must output whatever name that we enter uh, as the input over here. Okay, you gotta make sure it's really the case. And then you can see that the numbers we have over here, for example, when we input 100.345, uh, it has been formatted into 100.34. Okay, and also for 200.478, it has been formatted as 200.48. Okay, that's uh, just use the uh, string that formats uh, method that we have been using uh, throughout, the, uh, throughout all the previous lab exercises. Okay, and then we also got, so the bottom line is you should have only, you should have only two digits after the decimal point. Okay, so now let's try to go to the second section over here. So with these three clients created, we're gonna do some uh, manipulation of their balances, okay? So these are the initial balances. Now let's see what we can do. So now under surface over here, so we got a spinner with three options. We can either do deposit, we can do withdraw, and we can do transfer. So there is a naming convention for this particular lab which you must follow, otherwise your app wouldn't work properly. Whenever we say deposit, we mean we want to deposit into some account owner, okay? When we say withdraw, we mean withdraw from some account owner, okay? It deposit into and withdraw from. And also we got the third surface called transfer. Whenever we say transfer, that means we want to transfer some money from some account into another account. Okay, so let me demonstrate how this naming convention is going to affect the usability of your app. 
So now let's say we want to deposit, that means we want to deposit into, in this case, the from account owner, in which case for every uh, owner, we got four options. So we got blank as the default option, which means this input value is not applicable for this particular service. And also we got client one, client two, and client three. Over here for the spinner for simplicity, we simply say client one, client two, and client three. You do not have to say Alan, Mark, and Tom. Okay, you do not have to. Okay, let's say we want to deposit. Uh, okay, of course, for the from, we want to leave it empty for the deposit case. We want to deposit into, let's say, Mark's account. Okay, we'll say client two. So client two refers to Mark over here. Let's say we want to deposit into client two for, let's say, $200. Okay, let's say that's the case. Okay, so now, as soon as I say complete transaction, it's going to complete this particular deposit transaction. It's going to deposit $200 into Mark's account, which will let, him, let, uh, let his balance become 400.478, okay? And then you'll be formatted accordingly, okay? Let's say, uh, where, uh, and on the other hand, uh, client one and client three, Alan and Tom, their balances should remain the same. Okay, let's try that. When I say complete transaction, we should see that this should become 400.48. Okay, that's exactly what happened, 400.48, whereas client Allen and client Tom, their balances do not change. Okay, so that's only for deposit into. Let's try also withdraw. When we say withdraw, in this case, the convention is withdraw from. Okay, in that case, we're going to first of all leave the to owner, which is not applicable for the withdraw empty. And then let's say withdraw from, let's say withdraw from Tom, in this case, client three. Okay, again, you don't have to display any of the names in, uh, in the spinner, just say client one, client two, and client three, just for simplicity. Let's say we want to withdraw from Tom, let's say we want to withdraw $100, for example. If we say 100 over here, so similarly, in this case, if we withdraw, we should only change the balance for Tom. It should really decrease from 300.78 down to 200.78 whereas for mark and allen their balances should be, remain the same okay let's say we say complete transaction here we should see only the 300 is going to go down to 200 okay exactly so you'll see 200.78 okay by the way whenever you update the new balances you only have to update on the panel the label over here for these initial balances they are simply initial values so you do not have to change them okay okay finally let's illustrate how the transfer surface is going to be offered so now let's choose transfer in which case both account owners from and to are both applicable so now let's say we want to transfer, let's say, so this is the current balances we have for the three clients. Let's say we want to transfer from Mark into Alan $50, for example, okay? We want to transfer from Mark, who is client two, into Alan, who is client one, okay? From client two into client one, let's say $50, okay? Let me say $50 over here. So what we expect to change is that we should really see client two uh, decrements from 400 down to 350 and also at the same time uh, for the client one is going to uh, be incremented from 100 into 150 you can think about transfer from one account into another it's like uh, at the same time you're trying, to, you're trying to do two transactions you're trying to withdraw from one account and also deposit into another account okay that's kind of how the logic would go when you do your implementation Okay, so now let's try that, and we should see that 350 over for client two, and also we should see 150 for client one. Okay, 350 here, and also 150 here. So notice that you should always format your outputs only two digits after the decimal point. That's a requirement. You must follow that. Okay. Finally, let's do one one uh, one more transfer. Let's say we want to transfer from Mark into Tom. How would, how would we do that? Okay, we remain re a transfer as a service. Now we want to transfer from client two to client three. And let's say, uh, let's change that to $75. Now in this case, we should see that it should become uh, 275 for Mark, and also it should be also 275 for Tom, okay? Complete transaction, you can see that that's exactly how the transfer is supposed to be done. 
Okay, so so far we have demonstrated two stages of your app. The first stage, uh, the two stages can be assumed on any user that, that is going to use your app. First stage, the user will enter the names and initial balances for the three separate accounts or three separate clients in the bank. Okay, and also is they're going to click on the create accounts uh, button. And then the second stage is going to be about the user can choose for as many services as they like, but each time one service at a time. They can choose from either deposit, withdraw and transfer. For deposit, we should always say deposit into some account, whereas we're going to leave the uh, uh, this part empty. On the other hand, when we say withdraw, we're going to say withdraw from. So we're going to choose some client over here, and then we'll leave the uh, two empty. Okay. When we do transfer, it's going to be transfer from some account into another account. So both from and to should be there. Okay. Uh, let's say client two. Okay. And we can make the assumption that whenever you do a withdraw, the balance is always enough. And when you do the transfer, also the transfer from account is always enough can afford to do the transfer into another account. Okay, that's something we assume. You can look at the assumption section on, on your instruction PDF. Okay, that's about this simple app over here. But the main learning outcome for this particular app is not really to complicate your controller, the activity class, but rather we really want you to practice object orientation. In this case, we want you to practice to really develop two classes uh, for the model rather than just one class which you have done, you have you have been doing so far in the previous labs. For this particular lab, we want you to practice doing two classes for the model, the bank class and also the account class. You can refer to the instruction for more, for more hints.